Bro, I remember waking up one Sunday, right? This had to be in like January. I'm pretty sure it was snowing outside. Anyway, I open up Twitter and the first thing I see on the tippy tip top of my timeline, with no warning, might I add, is some random ass blonde hair anime chick undressing whoa, whoa, on my screen. Whoa, whoa. And I'm not gonna lie, bro, I got a little pissed because it's like, bro, I had just woke up. It is 8.37 in the a.m. I ain't even brushed my teeth yet. My breath's still mad hot. How you gonna put this on my timeline? So I'm like, okay, I go and do a little bit of detective work, right? They call me El Lolly, and I end up discovering the name of this anime. My Dress Up Darling. It had just started airing like, I don't know, two weeks ago at the time. I'm like, My Dress Up Darling. Bet. You're on the blacklist. I swore up and down I would never watch this show, bro. Anyway, so that was Cap. I ended up watching My Dress Up Darling like last week, and I'm not gonna lie, that joint was heat, bro. Like, I'm genuinely surprised by how much I was enjoying the show. I'm gonna have to give that joint a cool 8.4. Oof. Nah, 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 nah. Run me back some of those points, because the fan service do be wild in that joint, bro. Like, I'm not gonna lie, it was starting to get annoying. Uh, I'm gonna give it a cool 8 out of 10. Yeah final offer i'm sorry bro but nah i wanted to make a video on my dress up darling because look bro i know a lot of y'all watching are like me for real right you just a straight meathead bro you be watching straight shonen seinen boxing and scraps nothing but straight fades and felonies and you know what that's cool for real like watch whatever makes you happy but i'm just trying to say that at least in my experience bro sometimes that slife anime or that romance anime you thought would never hit ends up hitting different bro and before you know it some of those slifes might even be in your top five so like i don't know just give it a shot bro like come on give it a chance and also bro listen like Listen, listen, bro, all the baddies be feeding this life anime, bro. Like, I'm not even gonna lie to you. A silent voice. Bro, I'm putting y'all on game right now, but are you listening? That's the question. All right, boom. So, you see bro right here? This is Waka Nagojo. Our boy Gojo is your typical high school boy, right? Except he got no friends, no girls. He really just be out here living life down detrimental, bro. Like, it's actually kind of sad when you think about it. But you know what? I gotta give the boy Gojo some credit, bro. Because unlike some of these romance anime MCs that got no type of redeeming qualities whatsoever, I gotta respect Gojo because he's in his bag, bro. He's focused on his life goals. You see, Gojo is trying to be the successor to his grandfather who makes Hina dolls for a living. Hina dolls are like these uh traditional ornamental Japanese dolls, by the way. I don't know if y'all knew that or not, but yeah. Anyway, part of the reason Gojo doesn't really talk to anyone is because he's like so laser focused on his craft that he's okay with just being on like some real life hermit sh and just focusing on nothing but Hina dolls. Like, I don't know. I feel like you low key gotta respect Gojo's dedication, bro. Because like, imagine being so dedicated to your craft that you just do nothing but grind Hina dolls all day, bro. Like, bro really min maxed his life so that he could focus on Hina dolls. Like, I don't know. I feel like he's really a different breed for that energy right there. But. Him being dedicated to his craft actually is only like half the reason why he isolates himself. Alright, so I want to talk about Gojo's backstory real quick because I'm not gonna lie to you, bro. When I first saw this backstory, I thought it was probably like top five corniest backstories of all time. Cause look, bro, basically this man's backstory consists of like a six second flashback from his past when he was like six years old where this girl pulls up on him and she's like, Hey yo, you're a boy that plays with Hina dolls? Ew, gross. And then she just turns around and runs off. And yo, when I tell you this six second interaction is so traumatic traumatizing to gojo bro like bro this man is literally in high school so it's got to be like at least i don't know 10 years removed from when the original interaction happened yet to this day he still will not talk to anybody because literally every time he's about to break out of his shell he has a flashback to this moment and is like uh never mind let me uh just go talk to some hina dolls instead and bro i kid you not for like the first i don't know three episodes of this season bro they spam this little six second flashback so hard bro like i swear they use this very clip at least four times over the course of three episodes but like i'm not gonna lie to you bro by the time I may finally decided to stop spamming this joke. I thought it was my backstory, bro. Started to feel personally attacked, bro, when she said boys couldn't play with Hina dolls. Oh, and damn well, I never seen a single Hina doll in my life. Never touched one. Never interacted with one. So, yeah, needless to say, I thought this backstory was pretty unrealistic at first, because I was like, bruh. Ain't no way someone's still gonna be caught up over being roasted when they were like six, bro. Stop playing with me. But then I really sat back and thought about it, and I realized, bro. I deadass have a similar backstory. My dress up darling stole my backstory, bro. All right, bro, bro, bro. No, 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 no. Look, look, look. All right, let me explain. Let me explain. Okay, story time. So let me take you back, bro. It was like 2008. Kirby Superstar Ultra Hit just dropped. Bro, that's Pete Gaming right there. I'm sorry. Life was good, bro. I was in kindergarten, so school was mad easy. Life didn't really have any problems, bro. Like, my biggest concern in life was probably like, I don't know, Bakugan battles or something. I don't even know. Anyway, so recess has just ended, right? And I'm at the water fountain trying to refuel my energy before nap time. And I'm not going to lie to you. I 
was over there going doofus mode on the water fountain, bro. Like, I was taking some insane gulps. I can't even lie to you. But you know what I didn't do? I wasn't one of those nasty ass kids who put their whole lips up to the water spout, bro. Like, I'm sorry. If you did that sh you are the weakest link, bro. I'm not even gonna lie to you. This probably would start a coronavirus, in all fairness and honesty. Anyway, uh, I, I digress. So, I'm over here slurping down on the water fountain, bro. And then suddenly, this girl pulls up next to me. For the sake of this video, let's just call her, uh... Actually, nah, I'm about to dox her ass. Her name was Alexandra, bro. Speaking of names, there's another piece of context I gotta provide y'all with real quick for this story to make sense, okay? So, just bear with me. So, as y'all can see by the name of this channel, I go by the nickname Teddy. Like, even in my real life, people call me Teddy. But as I'm sure some of y'all have been able to guess by now... My government name isn't Teddy, it's Theodore, like the president. All right, boom. So Alexandra pulls up next to me. Mind you, I'm over here minding my own business, enjoying that bacteria-infested elementary school water fountain water. Like, I'm barely paying this girl any mind, bro, and I don't even know, like, why she's standing next to me. And this girl just stops, looks me dead in my eyes, and says these exact words. Theodore? <laughs> More like Theodork. And she just runs off, bruh. When I tell you I almost drowned in that water fountain, bro, like, I don't even know what type of timing she was on to be acting that hostile, entirely unprovoked to begin with. Like, I don't know if she was in the lab cooking up that roast for a while, and she just decided it was finally time for it to make its grand debut while I was at my most vulnerable. But, like, to this day, I still don't know why she did this, bro. I'll probably never get the chance to ask her, because she moved in, like, third grade. But all I know is that I felt that roast in my bones, bro. <laughs> and to this day, I can't even deny that part of the reason why I started going by Teddy is because every time someone calls me Theodore, I just get flashbacks to that fateful day when I was called a Theodork. <laughs> <laughs> nah, I'm not gonna lie. Imagine roasting someone so hard they mess around and change their whole identity. Like, I low-key gotta give her props for that one because, bro, without her intervention, I would still be walking around, like, in real life, unironically going by Theodore in, like, my day-to-day -day life. And I don't know. I just feel like that's a bad timeline to be in. Um... Yeah, anyway, I kind of got distracted for real. All I was trying to say is that Gojo's backstory, it resonated with me for real, okay? W backstory. But I'm gonna cool it on my boy Gojo for a second. We'll talk about him some more in a minute, because for now, it's time. The moment you all been waiting for. Let's talk about the reason why 98% of y'all probably even started this show slash clicked on this video in the first place, bro. The TikTok girl herself. Kitagawa Mari. Now look, I'm gonna get more into her character later, but first we need to talk about how she was first introduced into the show, because bruh, this gotta be top 5 most forced oh. character intros I've ever seen in my life, bro. Like, the writers were on some real loony sh** with this one, bro. Alright, let me set the scene for you. So our boy Gojo was chilling in the back of the class, right? Being a wallflower, being a sad boy, minding his own business, right? Probably thinking about Hina dolls or something, I don't know. Then all of a sudden, I kid you not, Kitagawa comes flying out of nowhere, bro. Like, she is in the air, full body elevation, at least three feet off the ground. She flies across the classroom and bashes her dome piece against the edge of Gojo's desk. I swear to God, I cannot make this stuff up, bro. And get this, you wanna know why? You wanna know why she was randomly flying through the air? Bro, me too! Cause to this day, they have yet to provide a lick of context as to why she was soaring through the sky on a random Tuesday afternoon. Like, they really just want us to sit here and accept this as a totally normal, uneventful day-to-day -day interaction. Like, bro, come on now. And you know how I just said she smacked her cranial bone against the edge of Gojo's desk? Somehow, instead of getting a concussion or, I don't know, any type of sustained injury, Shawty just hops right up mad casual talking about, ow. That hurts. Anyway, your name is Gojo, right? Like, I'm sorry, but this character intro had me rolling, bro. Cause like, at this point, if you gonna do all that, you might as well just have Kitagawa come casually introduce herself or something. Cause I don't know what they were trying to do with this intro, bro. But this was some real doofus right here, bro. Anyway, enough about her character intro, though. I want to take some time to actually talk about Kitagawa's like character as in the way she's written. Because I'm not even gonna lie to you, bro. When I first saw her character, like before I had even watched the show, I was most definitely preying on her downfall. Cause, bro, look, bro. I took one look at her, and she just immediately gave me like tiktok girl vibes bro like she got the whole look down she got the choker the acrylics the damn color contacts the cheek highlights like she just has that look bro she has that look like she owns a ring light and just be making thirst traps in her bedroom all day and night i don't know it's funny because i think canonically she's actually like a twitter user yeah like in the show she'd be on twitter and i don't i don't know what's worse between twitter users and tiktok users because actually not nah, twitter users are most definitely way worse because tiktok users be toxic but it's mostly just like jokes for real but twitter users on the other hand 
Nah, bro. It's just straight rage and felon behavior on the bird app, bro. Like, that plus the most unfunniest trolling you have ever seen in your life. I feel like Kitagawa got a young boy profile picture on the low. Like, I don't know. Let me find out she in someone's comment section talking about L plus ratio, bro. Like, anyway, I digress. So, I thought Kitagawa was gonna be like, uh, I don't know, like a sort of waifu bit character. And don't get me wrong, she definitely is, but like, for some reason, I don't know. She just felt like more well rounded to me. Like, okay, so her whole thing is that she's like a cosplayer, right? Like, she gets real passionate about these different animals anime and games and her way of displaying that passion is that she likes to cosplay as characters from these shows and like yeah that's cool like and honestly i feel like i could kind of relate to her on those grounds in the sense that like you know the same way she likes to cosplay from the anime she likes i like to make videos that get copyright struck by the publishers of the anime that i But nah, like, in all seriousness, I could relate to her wanting to dedicate time to create content around the art she enjoys. And like, I don't know, it's always cool to see parts of yourself reflected in the way a character's written, you know what I'm saying? But nah, what really stood out to me about Kitagawa was the fact that she just felt like, I don't know, I don't want to say she felt real, because like, uh, I'm not on no weird shit. But let me put it like this, when you watch the show, you see enough sides of her that like, I don't know, she didn't feel like a one-trick pony. Like, yeah, she's a dweeb, she's a dork, alright, and obviously that's like her main draw, right? Like, that's the driving character trait, like, the whole reason the show is about cosplay but like we get to see more sides of her than just her weave side like most of the show's plot is driven forward by her being like you know spontaneous and just being like an outgoing person as opposed to like your typical you know shut-in sort of weave character also she's written to just be like a genuinely nice person like i don't know what's up with all these mean ass anime girls lately but y'all gotta calm down with that like kitagawa just strikes me as a nice person she's always going out of her way to like do nice things for gojo even before like she spontaneously falls in love with them i don't know bro i guess what i'm trying to say is that i was trying to be a Kitagawa hater, but she won me over, so GG to her, I guess. Oh, but make no mistake, I'm still a hater. I may not be a Kitagawa hater, but there's another character in this show that I'm ready to throw the dingers with at any given moment. You see this girl right here who looked like a fusion between Taiga Isaka and Shoko Nishimiya? This is, uh, Juju. She's low-key like your typical tsundere, right? But I'm not really here to talk about that right now, because I feel like enough people have probably already talked about that. I'm here to talk about her devious deeds, bro, because Shorty Loki on some real felony timing, bro, and I don't see anyone talking about how crazy this girl is, so I guess I gotta be the one to expose her. Okay, so the girl Juju is basically like a famous cosplayer, right? Like, she got, like, mad Twitter clout from her cosplay. So one day, she's scrolling through Twitter, right? And Kitagawa just pops up on her timeline. Like, I'm not gonna lie, she just like me for real at the beginning of this video. So she sees Kitagawa's cosplay and just immediately goes hater mode, bro. She's like, who is this girl and why is her cosplay so fire? Come to find out, she is so pressed over finding out who made Kitagawa's costume she basically stalks Kitagawa to a cosplay event to find out that Gojo is the craftsman behind her cosplay. But bro, that's not even the half of it. Because she then proceeds to pull up at Gojo's crib, unannounced, entire, complete stranger, take a whole bath in his home. And then when Gojo actually stumbles in and sees her bare booty naked, because, you know, anime type shit. By complete accident, might I add, she basically takes the fact that he saw her naked and uses it to extort him into making her a free cosplay that he wasn't even trying to make in the first place on some like, if you don't make this cosplay, I'm going to expose you as a peeping Tom type energy i'm like bro what this is certified felony behavior bro like in a way she was low-key threatening my man with jail time like when you think about it over some cosplay though bro i can't be the only one who watched this episode and was like taken aback by how out of pocket juju was acting bro like i'm not gonna lie this almost made me drop the show for real yeah i know it didn't that was a lie but you know what did almost make me drop the show bro the fan service. All right, I feel like I gotta talk about this, bro. I'm gonna keep this brief because I'm not really trying to catch a demonetization. All I'm gonna say is that if you don't like fan service, <laughs> you would best sit this one out, bro. In fact, go ahead, like this video, log off your PC, go outside, get some fresh air, do something. Because, yo, I don't know what's good with these animators, but it seems like every time it's time for some fan service to pop up on screen, bro, the animators suddenly discover an extra 20k in the budget and just decide to go beast mode with the animation. Like, don't get me wrong, the show's animation is already like gorgeous to begin with but for some reason the animators start doing the most during the fan service scenes but yeah like i said i'm not even gonna get that deep into it but the fan service scenes they're <laughs> they're there and it was low-key starting to annoy me bro like they had me about ready to drop the whole show around episode four but there was one scene that resonated with me so hard it basically saved the show for me like after this one scene i found myself being able to really enjoy and like look past all the forced ass fan service and really just enjoy the show for what it was all right so let's talk about my boy gojo one more time in episode four we see Gojo just suffer a straight up burnout, bro. Like, he's basically overwhelmed by all this stuff he stacked on his plate, and he kind of just crashes and burns, and <laughs> oh boy, can I relate to that one. To be honest, I've been in, like, a perpetual state of burnout to various degrees since, like, last October, and I'm not even just talking about YouTube, but just life in general has been kind of 
bleh. I don't know, it's been weird, but I can attest to you firsthand that burnout depression is like some straight ass, bro. Like, I wouldn't wish that on my worst enemy. Besides Alexandra, bro, I hope she burns out on whatever she's up to right now. But nah, all jokes aside for a sec, it was kind of surreal watching this scene because all the things that Gojo was thinking to himself, I had just found myself thinking to myself like not even a week prior while I was trying to like box through midterms. And I'm not even gonna lie, watching this part made me drop like three singular tears because, bro, I don't know, this sh sucks, bro. Burnout depression is a horrible feeling to have, especially when you're trying to please multiple parties while still maintaining your sanity. I'm sure some of y'all watching this can relate. But then we get to this flashback, and Gojo is basically a kid, and he's talking to his granddad. And the granddad's like, you know, when you love something, you got no choice but to keep moving forward and just push through the tough times. And I'm sitting there watching this, and I'm like, you know what? Granddad's spitting for real, bro. Like, things might be hard right now, but I gotta keep moving forward. Like, let me start working on a video to feed the streets real quick, because I really love doing this, and I don't want to stop anytime soon. So yeah, just for inspiring me to ask you, like, <laughs> get back to making videos, I gotta crown Granddad to be the goat of this show. So go ahead and clap it up, y'all. I feel like there is so much more I could say about this show, like so much more justice I could do it. But honestly, this script is already getting mad long, and I got schoolwork. So at this point, I'ma just let y'all form your own opinions about it. Go ahead and watch it, bro. It's short. It's like 12 episodes. Just, just do it, bro. I don't think you'll regret. It. But yeah, those are my arbitrarily organized ramblings on uh, my dress up, darling. Eight out of ten. Would recommend. Love y'all. Stay blessed. Peace. Yeah.